Hi guys, I'm Ben and you are watching Gears and Gasoline and this is like my 17th take trying to get this right. So this is my Evo and today I need to make preparations for this car to go to the track soon. So I figured today why not kill two birds with one stone, metaphorically speaking. And while I make these preparations, I can show you guys the really important things that you should upgrade on any car that you have, regardless of whether it's an Evo or whatever kind of car. If you're planning on going to the track, these things you should upgrade. And then I can do some other modifications to my car that I just wanted to do just because they're cool. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, right off the bat, we need to make sure that our car is in healthy running condition. So no significant leaks anywhere on the car. All of your suspension components are on tight. Your wheels are on tight. This is the stuff we need to make sure of first before we start modifying stuff. After that, we can move all this product out of the way, get the car jacked up and start working on it. So no matter how badly all of us want to just go to the track and lay down smoking fast lap times, we've got to be able to walk before we can run, and we've got to be able to stop before we can go fast. So in my opinion, definitely the most important thing to upgrade if you're going to go to the track is your braking system, which in this case is going to be brake pads and brake fluid. I think that that is a definite couple of musts that everybody should upgrade before they hit the track. So for starters, I'm going to be changing out these street pads that I've got in my brakes right now for these beefy Hawk DTC 60 track pads. Uh, I ran them for just two events last year and they are phenomenal. Tons of braking power. Uh, they're just really loud and really dusty. So these aren't necessarily something that you want to be running on the street because you just don't need that much stopping power and you don't want all that dust and you don't want all that squealing. But when you run them at the track, you never have to worry about fade, basically. Uh, so every time you go into a corner, you can rest assured that your brake pads are going to be there for you. They haven't cooked yet. They're going to give you as much stopping power as they gave you at the first corner. So with mechanical soundness being the number one priority, I would say that the second most important thing is definitely uh, upgrading your brake pads for the track and having a, a solid brake compound that's rated for the track. And then after that, it would be brake fluid. Okay, so now we are going to move on to putting in some new brake fluid. Uh, this is going to be high temp brake fluid, which like I said, right behind brake pads, I think is probably the most important thing to put on any car if you're going to take it to the track. If not the most important thing, you should definitely do both. Uh, so we are going to be using Motul RBF 600, uh, which is uh, just a high temp brake fluid uh, that works really well. I think I've used it before. You know, this isn't the only option that you have. There's also uh, options from Castrol if you're literally made of money. I think what I have in here right now is ATE uh, Type 200. It used to be the ATE Super Blue, if you've heard of that. I think they're pretty much all the same. A lot of people have you know, preferences. I haven't been doing this long enough to really have a preference. I like Type 200 because it's a uh, really cheap. Um, MA Performance was kind enough to send out some uh, Motul RBF 600, so that's what we're using here. So, for example, I've got this Valvoline Dot 3 Dot 4 brake fluid that's just uh, a typical street fluid, just off the, off the shelf in a parts store compared to the Motul. This has a boiling point at the absolute maximum of about 480 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas the Motul is going to be 570. So you're going to get a ton more temperature out of the Motul, and you'll have a much lower chance of boiling your brake fluid with the Motul as opposed to like a parts store uh, uh, non-racing brake fluid. Floor. All right, close. Okay, so what me and Mark are doing right now is uh, flushing my brake fluid out. So the old brake fluid that I used last season was still a high temp track fluid, but now we are gonna cycle that out while we're installing more uh, Motul fluid so that the entire system is eventually just gonna be running on fresh Motul RBF 600. All right, push. 
All right, so we've done brake pads and brake fluid, so now our car can stop. Now you might be wondering, Ben, I don't have an Evo, whatever my car is, it doesn't have Brembo's, it doesn't have big rotors, it doesn't have braided lines. Do I need those things uh, as well before I go to the track? And the answer is probably not. Uh, you'll probably be able to get away with just pads and fluid before uh, you really need to start upgrading a bunch of other stuff. Now, in certain cases, let's say you know, you're know uh, in a car that has a lot more horsepower than it did stock, yeah, maybe you wanna upgrade the rest of your hardware. Maybe your OEM calipers aren't doing uh, a good enough job, but if everything's mostly uh, stock, you know, your car doesn't weigh a bunch more than it did from factory or doesn't have a bunch more horsepower than it did from factory, you should be okay uh, with just upgrading those essentials and uh, getting used to your car on track. Now we need to look at fluid changes, oil changes, differential changes, trans fluid changes, uh, coolant changes. All of these things are important before you hit the track because you don't want uh, any of these rotating components to seize up on you and uh, fry themselves because you just had old fluids in there. Right, so we have now done the modifications that are gonna keep us safe on track and the modifications that are gonna save us money on track. So now we can start to do the modifications that are gonna cost us a lot of money. Uh, so tires right off the bat are a uh, fantastic modification that you can do if you wanna get faster, if you wanna get a little bit more performance out of your car because they are the most important aspect of performance, honestly. It doesn't matter if you have a thousand horsepower, if you have garbage tires, you can't put it down. It doesn't matter if you have the biggest brakes in the world, if you have garbage tires, you're just gonna lock them up. So. In my case, I'm currently running winter tires because we're just coming out of winter. And when I say that, I mean we've been in spring for like a month now and I'm just way behind. So with winter tires, it is absolutely crucial that you change those out before you go to the track. If you start tracking on winter tires, they're going to be shredded within like two laps and you're gonna be out a bunch of money. Uh, so if you're on winter tires, you really should change them. If you're on an all season tire, uh, you might want to think about going to a summer tire. Um, all season tires really aren't intended for the track most of the time, um, and they're not going to give you the best grip that you could have. That being said, can you track on all season tires? You can, yeah. We've done it before, um, and uh, it's not fast, but you know it can still be a great time. It can still be a lot of fun, and it's not inherently dangerous. You just need to understand the limitations of your tires before you go sending it uh, you know, through a fast corner or something like that. Right, so for example, this is my winter tire. Uh, this is the 235 section with all of these uh, Hakka Sipes cut into the tread for maximum snow grip, and these would be a terrible idea on track. Uh, meanwhile, we've got my buddy Mark's R888R from Toyo in a 275 section. This is some fresh meat. Uh, some good, good rubber for the track. And these are a hundred tread wear, way wider tire. Obviously, massive, massive sections of tread. No siping for rain, really. They're gonna be garbage in rain, they're gonna be garbage in cold, and they're gonna be phenomenal on track. They're gonna have a ton of grip. Uh, so, obviously, two tires that are intended for very different things. So, another thing to consider is Temperature on track. Is your car gonna be able to stay cool? Uh, this is another preventative maintenance type thing. Uh, is your car gonna blow up on track, right? If it gets too hot, are you gonna damage things from your uh, engine getting too hot? So one thing you can definitely upgrade is your radiator. So, you know, if you're in a BMW, definitely maybe wanna do that because they're pretty famous for cooling issues or, you know, whatever car you're in, uh, just find out, you know, go on forums, look things up. What is a common failure point? Um, is your radiator healthy? Uh, you can just visually inspect that kind of thing. Uh, in my case, the Evo uh, doesn't really suffer from cooling issues uh, on the stock radiator, especially at near stock power level, which is what I'm at. However, I have a Koyo Rad. Um, they were kind enough to send one out. So uh, I'm just gonna do that modification and it's gonna look rad. It's gonna work at least as well, if not better. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and install now this Koyo Rad radiator to help keep temps cool on track. And at this point, we're pretty much done uh, with things that I need to do as far as uh, safety or reliability on this car. But I figure while I'm in there, in the front of the car, <sighs> might as well just do this Turbo XS intercooler. But then while I'm in there, might as well just do this MA Performance lower intercooler pipe. So 
yeah. All this stuff is just for my own entertainment. It's, at this point, not really so much about what you need to do to prepare for the track, but I'm gonna just do these mods anyways. So I've got the radiator currently draining out the antifreeze that's in there in the system and then I'm going to flush it one more time. Uh, and while that's happening, I'm going to take off the front bumper uh, so that I can access the inner cooler. Right. Presto, so this uh, Calsonic OEM uh, radiator from 2006 is finally out of the car. Uh, you know, these are perfectly fine, especially on my power level, uh, to cool the car. They'll do a perfectly good job. Um, just issues, you know, like this plastic end tank on the, on the metal uh, core, you know, it, stuff like that can often fail. Just when things start to get old and hot, uh, whereas the new Koyo Rad is going to be uh, entirely aluminum uh, end tanks and all. So stuff like that is uh, just really cool for reliability and stuff like that. And it looks amazing. So um, no point in not doing it. So this is the OEM intercooler. Uh, it is currently covered in bugs because it's springtime. This is a two and a half inch thick core and 19 inches long. The good thing about this intercooler is that it's, it's pretty light, honestly. But... This turbo access intercooler is a bit heavier and for good reason. Uh, it's a three and a half inch core. Um, so it's almost an inch thicker. And then it is a 24 inch long core, meaning that you're getting more surface area and also more cooling capacity with the extra thickness. And it gave me a great excuse to upgrade from this garbage lower intercooler piping. As you can see, it necks down dramatically uh, and that's going to definitely cause a restriction in airflow. So we are going from this OEM lower intercooler pipe to this MA Performance. And you can see the massive difference in diameter. And this pipe has been dynoed to show like 10 horsepower in gain at least, uh, which is, that's significant. That's a lot. So I'm really stoked on that.
So guys, it has been a very long day. I have to put this car back together and go home and go to sleep because I have a shoot tomorrow. But thank you very much for watching. I hope that this video was somewhat helpful or educational in some capacity. And I hope that it showed you the things that you need to do in order to go to the track and have fun. So thanks very much, guys, and have a great night.